So before starting uh, today's session, let's recap what we have seen uh, till today, uh, till yesterday. So in the previous session, uh, we have seen V model, especially V model, right? So in the V model, we have discussed about what is verification and validation. And also we have discussed about uh, static testing and dynamic testing. So when I talk about static and dynamic testing, so the basically static testing means we can verify the documentation like requirement documentation, design documentation, low level design, high level design. So to review the documentation, which is basically comes under static testing. So our testing is mainly focusing on the documentation part, like project related documents. And the dynamic testing is mainly focusing on the software. So we are going to validate the software directly by providing different inputs and observing outputs, whether it is working according to customer requirement or not. So that is comes under the dynamic testing and similarly verification and validation. So verification means what, whatever the process we are following, we are cross checking each and every step. So whether we are following process correctly or not and uh, verification techniques also we have discussed like reviews, walkthroughs and inspections. And today we are going to discuss in detail and validation means verifying the software, testing the software according to customer requirement, which is comes under verification and unit testing, integration testing, system testing, and uh, UIT testing. So these are the techniques we have to use during validation. Okay, these are validation techniques. And under verification, we have a reviews, walkthroughs, and inspection. So these are the concepts we have discussed in, the, in our previous session, okay? Now, today we are going to focus on uh, review, walkthrough, and inspection. So even white box and black box testing methods. So what is white box and black box testing? Yesterday also we have discussed. White box means we have to test the internal logic of the program. So normally what developers will do is the developers write a programs to develop the software and to test the code directly, which is basically comes under white box testing. White box means what? What is there internally? We can see that. That is white box testing. And only developers can do that. And black box testing means what? We can verify the functionality of the test, functionality of the application or functionality of the software, whether it is working according to customer requirement or not. So basically in the black box testing, we don't need to know the programming because we don't, we don't need to know the internal logic of the program. We have to just know the, how functionality is working, right? How the flows are working, how the UI is there. So all these things we will focus during black box testing. So we don't need to know the internal logic of the program. So testers actually will do black box testing. Okay. So these are the two things uh, we have discussed uh, in our previous session. And now come to today's session, review walkthrough and inspection. So yesterday itself, I have talked about static and dynamic testing. So what are the static testing techniques? Let me write here, static testing techniques. I told you three different techniques static tech uh, static testing techniques there are three techniques we have one is review is one of the technique review and the second technique is walkthrough and the third technique is inspection so these are the three techniques we use during stat static testing means verifying the documentation and similarly we have a dynamic testing techniques dynamic testing Techniques. So what are the dynamic testing techniques? Dynamic testing means we are actually testing the software. So unit testing, integration testing, and uh, system testing, integration testing, and uh, we have a system testing, and then we have UAT testing, user acceptance testing. So these are the dynamic testing techniques. So we will discuss this dynamic testing technique later. So static testing techniques are reviews, walkthrough and inspection. So what exactly review, walkthrough, inspection means? So let us discuss uh, in detail. So what is review? So what is review? Suppose when I provide you some document, I ask you to review the document, what you will do normally? So when I give some document to you, I ask you to review the document. So normally what you will do is, you will read the entire document, right? So you will read entire the document whether it is completely or not, it is completely written or not, all the contents are mentioned in the document or not. That is a one thing. Second thing is what, whatever the content is specified in the document, which is correct or not. So these two things are comes under review part. 
So what is review means? Review is conducting on the documents. Review conducts on the documents to ensure correctness and completeness. So the whatever the content we specified in the document should be correct and it should be complete. So that is basically comes under the review. But what kind of reviews we do? Different type of reviews we can do. So different type of reviews we'll do. So normally we will do requirements review. So there are multiple reviews we have. Let me just put it here. So requirements review. What is requirement review means? As soon as we got the requirement from the customer, we will review them. So to understand those requirements better, we will review them. Each and requirement is mentioned or not. It is correct or not. So we can review that. And design reviews. And these design reviews will be conducted on the design documents. Normally the designs will design the low level documents, high level documents, like actually software will be designed in the form of diagrams and pictures. And those design documents we will review and code review. So even sometimes code also we can review. So whatever the developer has written the code that also can be reviewed, but not by the testers, even developers itself, because unit testing can be done by the developers. So whatever code they have written in the programs, they can also review the code whether all code is correctly written syntactically is correct or not, logically correct or not. So they will verify that. That is called code review. And sometimes one developer will return some code and another developer will review the code, how it is written and whether he followed proper coding standards or not. So that can be reviewed. That is called as a code review. And the second next thing is a test plan review. So even testing part, even testing uh, testers also will do some kind of reviews. So whatever documents they created, and they, those documents also will be reviewed by the testers, like test plan review, test cases review, sometimes even defects also we can review, like how many defects we have raised, how many are fixed, how many are still open. So we can also review the defects. So these are all comes under the review. So normally we are mainly focusing on the documentation, whether it is correct or uh, correct to ensure the correctness and completeness, whether the document is correctly written and whatever the content is mentioned, which is complete or not. So that is mainly called as a review, okay? And review can be done every, anyone. So in the team, even developer or tester or manager. So anybody can do the review part. So that is all about the simple review concept. And the next technique is a walkthrough. Sometimes we also do some walkthrough. And this is also mainly focused on the documents. Now we'll see what is walkthrough. So what is walk? So walk review can be done anytime from by any by anyone. Okay, there is no restriction, nothing. But when you come to the walkthrough, it is a basically informal review. This is also kind of a review, which is informal. Means what? We don't have a specific plan and we don't have a specific meeting invite, nothing. And whenever you want to do, you can do walk through. Walk through. It is a kind of a review, informal review. We can say. So let me just put a few points here regarding the walkthrough. The first point, it is informal review. What is formal review? What is informal review? Informal review means there will not be any proper plan. There will not be any schedule. That is comes under informal. Okay. Formal means what? We have to some, we have to be some plan before itself. And we have to send invite to the team. And we have to invite all the team members at particular point of time. So that is purely formal, but here walkthrough is an informal review. Means what? We can conduct walkthrough at any time, at any place. Other reads the document or code and discuss with the peer. So who is the other here? Means whoever created the document. So whoever created the document he is called as a other. So he will be involved mainly. He is a main person in the walkthrough. So he will go through the document, each and every statement or step. He will read the entire document or whatever code they have written, they can read the code and uh, discuss with the rest of the people. Suppose I have created one document and I am the author of the document. I just go through each and every step and I'll explain to you what exactly which contains. That is basically called as a walkthrough. The review is a different, walkthrough is different. Review can be done by many people. And even one single person also can do review. But walkthrough means at least two or three people will be there. Two or more people will be there. At least one other should be there. And he read the document and requirement. And others can also 
listen what he is saying exactly what he is trying to understand the document that is called walk through and it's not pre planned and can be done whenever is required that's the reason we say this is a informal review which is not planned as and when we required we can walk through the document with the team members normally whoever other is created he can sit together with the team and walk through the document so for example uh, you have created some test plan you have created some test cases you have written some test cases and you have to review first yourself okay review comes first whatever document you created yourself first you review yourself whether you mentioned everything or not correct or not and the next step what you will do you will review the document with your team members okay that is a com comes under walk through team members in the sense not everybody with the peers just one or two persons sit together and you go through the document and rest of the people will listen what you are exactly trying to understand them so that is basically walk through so it is not pre planned and also walk through doesn't have any minutes of meeting so normally when you conduct any meetings uh, in the company we will note down all the points okay we will note down what we have discussed in the meeting and we'll produce those points to the team we'll share all the meeting of minutes to the team and here we don't have such type of things because this is a informal if it is a completely formal meeting then everything will be there but it is informal okay and what is the basic difference between review and walk through in the review only other will be there okay whoever is required to understand the document he will read the document and checks the correctness and completeness only single person also can do review but when you come to the walk through at least two or more people will be involved it peers very number very minimal number of people only the team members only peers peers is nothing but the persons who are working with you along with you in your team so you go through the document and read the document the rest of the people can understand the document understand the content in the document so it is not pre planned and also doesn't have any minutes of meaning because it is a informal review okay that is a walk through and the next one is a inspection and this is another important thing inspection this is another technique we do in the static testing inspection so what is inspection means what inspection is more formal okay more formal means we have to pre planned so we have to pre planned and we have to send invite to the team members not only testing so sometimes even developers managers also is more mostly it is informal review we have to send an email to the team we have to invite them on particular time and what you will do inspection in inspection actually there are three kinds of people will be involved okay so in inspection there are three people or involved so one type of people called as a reader writer and moderator so there are three kinds of people will be involved in the inspection reader writer moderator so all right so in inspection especially three kinds of people will be involved reader writer and moderator so let us understand these three role very important so who is reader who is writer who is moderator so the reader means normally he is the author of the document so whoever is created the document which is called as a reader and he will read the document and the writer so what writer is nothing but suppose while reading the document by the other rest of the team will raise some questions or clarifications right and the writer will note down all the questions and clarification what they have discussed in that particular inspection meeting so that role is taken by one guy is called a writer he will note down all the clarifications on the issues everything and the third one is a moderator he is just like a an anchor moderator means he is like a mediator between the other and rest of the team okay so reader writer and moderator so moderator means he is actually organize the meeting he is a basically organizer okay and a reader writer and moderator so these are the three people will sit together and then do the inspection so it is a more formal review and reader will read the document and writer will write the write down all the issues and clarifications raised by the team and the moderator he moderate the meeting he organize the meeting okay 
and here many number of people will be involved other than right reader writer moderator rest of the people also will be involved whoever is working on the team like development and qa project managers everybody will be involved in this because this is more formal everybody should be there and inspection will have a proper schedule which will be intimated via email to the consent developers or testers because this is more formal meeting and before that we have to plan and we have to send an email to the team and we have to invite them on particular time and also we have to note down the minute, minutes of meeting and who is do that even writer or sometimes even moderator so these people will write down the minutes of meeting and share with the team so this is called as inspection so the static testing is nothing but testing the documentation whether which is correctly written or not and static testing can be done by using either review or walk through or inspection and inspection is more formal whereas review and walk through or informal because you can conduct them at any time at anywhere but inspection is more formal it is just like a meeting okay so these are the static testing techniques guys so review walk through and inspection now come to the dynamic testing techniques there are four kinds of techniques we have like unit testing integration testing system testing uat testing because here uh, by the time we start dynamic testing software will be ready coding part will be done so we have to test the software directly so during unit testing the developers will concentrate on testing the code what they have written and during integration testing they will integrate multiple modules and multiple components in the software and they will check the data flow between the components whether the those components properly communicating or not that is integration testing and in system testing actual testers will perform system testing whether our software is working according to customer requirement or not it is meeting all the requirements or not the functionality is working perfectly or not performance is good or not security testing ui testing there are lot of testings will be conducted during system testing normally the testers will be doing this testing and finally uat testing user acceptance testing normally the uat will be done by the testers along with the customers and they will set up the exact environment where the customer is going to work and they install the software and from the customer point of view they will test the some flows like what they do day to day to day basis on the software what are the transactions that they do they will test them and they also execute some of the test cases on the software that comes under the uat testing okay so we will discuss these in detail later so basically these are the techniques which we have to use in dynamic testing so static testing will mainly focus on the documentation project documentation dynamic testing mainly focusing on the software which we have developed actual software we are going to verify or validate okay right so the next thing is we have seen review walk through and inspection now in the software industry uh, especially software testing we hear these terms uh, qa qc and qa so now we need to understand them what exactly qa means what is exactly qc means and qa means okay very very important so first let us compare qa and qc okay and then i'll tell you what exactly qa means so this term is recently started qa means quality assurance qc means quality control qe means quality engineering okay a small difference i'll tell you first let us compare qa and qc then we'll come back to the qe okay these terms are very important uh, especially in the software industry so let us start what is qa and the qc let me put some points here QA versus QC. Okay, so QA versus QC. So the first point is QA is a process related. QC is actual testing of the software. Let's try to understand this. QA is process related. QC is actual testing of the software. QA is a process related. so what is process related means if there is a company 
there will be three important things there will be three pillars one is people second one is process the third one is product so these are the three p's p means uh, first people should be there if there is a company people should be there and we have to follow certain process and finally what you will get you will get the product product in the sense a software or an application so these three p's are the pillars of the company any company it is a not only it company it is can be any type of company these are the three p's we can call them as a pillars of a company the first p representing the people people should be there and the process should follow and finally the people follow the process to produce the a quality product that's the end goal right so here qa means it is a process related this is a process qa is related to the process means the qa the people who are belongs to the qa will always define the process and talk about the process and also they ensure rest of the people are following the proper uh, for process properly so that is the responsibility of the qa so qa is a, a process related okay and they will define the process okay they will define the process means what high level management people will comes under the qa which is talking about entire process development cycle from the beginning from the requirement to till we re release the product to the customer so the entire process is designed by these people and also these people are make sure rest of the people are following the process properly or not okay like high level management people comes under the qa if i say normally qa is process related it is a first point and qc is actual testing of the software so yesterday we have seen a few steps right software development process what is that requirement requirement analysis okay this is a uh, first step and the second step is design part and then we have seen coding part and then testing right and then deployment and then maintenance so these are the different phases we have seen in sdlc process this is sdlc process software development life cycle so here qa involved in every stage of software development because they are taking care of the process so what process we have to follow how people are following the process will be observed by the qa because high level management people comes under qa and this is involved throughout the development process remember this is involved throughout the development process but the qa is actually testing the software and the qa qc qc is actually testing the software and they are involved only during testing part okay so people who are working under testing they are actually comes under qc they are actually comes under qc quality control the, those people actually test the software whether it is working according to customer requirement or not okay that is a first point guys so qc is actually talking about the people especially testers especially testers okay and qa is a process related they will define the process and make sure others also following the process correctly or not that is qa qc team means what they are actual testers they are verifying and validating the software whether it is working according to customer requirement or not that is the first point next one the second point is qa qa focuses on building in quality qc focuses on testing for quality so observe this carefully i said qa is a process related why we need to have process why we need to have process finally we have to deliver the quality product so to deliver the quality product to the customer we have to follow certain process and why process we are following means the ultimate goal is to produce the quality product to the customer right and here we are also thinking about the quality of the software for that the process is designed so qa focuses on building in quality we are trying to build the quality product okay and this is related to that so process is designed for building the quality quality product and qc is for testers as i said so qc focuses on testing for quality what qc people will do testing why we are going to why we are doing testing because 
to deliver the quality product to the customer and both are talking about the quality but a small difference between these two are it is for building the quality it is for testing for quality okay building for quality in the sense to follow certain process properly finally we are able to deliver the quality product to the customer for that process is designed and what is why we are going to conduct testing because if the software is having bugs or not we have to find some bugs because we also trying to produce a quality product to the customer so testing for quality so qa focuses on building and quality qc focuses on testing for quality and again qc qa is related to people and process qc is related to the testing testing people all right the next point is qc qa is for preventing the defects qc is detecting the defects understand the difference qa is for preventing the defects qc is for detecting the defects so what is prevention so qa is talking about the process if you if you follow the process correctly or perfectly we can prevent the defects in the future right if i follow process correctly we can prevent the defects in the future so that is a prevention activity whereas qc is detecting the defects because which is related to the testing what you will do in the testing we will find the defects and why qc is there why testers are there to detect the defects as many as bugs we have in our application we have to find out that is called detection prevention means what we have to make sure in future should not any bugs or defects should not come in future that is a prevention detection means what the bugs will be there we are trying to find out that is a detection so qa is for qa is for preventing the defects and that's the reason they define the process and also they make sure people are following proper process correctly or not but qc is for detecting the defects while testing the software we are going to detect the defects find the defects and report to the developer because that is a testing activity okay that is a one difference and next one is as i said before qc is a process oriented it will always focus on the process always talk about process 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 and uh, that's the reason which is involved in everywhere that means throughout the development process qa is involved it is talk about the requirement talk about the design coding testing deployment everywhere qa will take care about so because the management managers product managers project managers they are comes under the qa actually so they are taking care of everything so they are involved throughout the development process but qc is a product oriented what is product oriented means testing during testing we are mainly focusing on the quality of the product our main goal is to produce a quality software to the customer or quality product to the customer so our our main goal or main intention should be on product not about the process we follow certain process but if that that is not our job to define the process and everything that is a qa but qc means what we are product oriented our concentration is always on the product quality finding bugs so this is the actual area we are going to focus which is product so qa is a process oriented qc is a product oriented okay and uh, the last point is as i said qa is for entire software development life cycle whereas qc is for testing part in sdlc so when i say sdlc these are the different phases requirement analysis design coding testing deployment and maintenance so qc qa for entire life cycle so as i said before qa is involved in every phase whereas qc is involved in the testing phase people are working on the testing department we can call them as a qc actually we have to say qc them but people are normally calling qa people but actual term is a qc they are comes under the qc because they are the people actually testing the software and concentrating on the product and the qa means a process people who are define the process comes under the qa and that's the reason this is there for entire life cycle whereas the qa is there only in the testing part which is a one part of entire qa we can say qc is a subset of qa qa is nothing but an entire process 
QC is nothing but which is a one part in the QA, which is testing. Okay, so these are the two differences between these are the few differences between QA and QC. Remember, guys. So QA is a process related, whereas the QA is actual testing of the software. QA focuses on building in quality. They are always trying to build the quality product, and QC is always focusing on the testing the quality, testing for the quality. And QA is preventing activity. QC is a detecting activity. And QA is is a process oriented. QC is a product oriented. QA is for entire life cycle. QC is for testing part of SDLC. Okay, so these are the uh, few differences. Which we need to understand between QA and QC. Very very important question in interview. Okay, so I hope you guys are clear. Can you please confirm in the chat window, everyone? So now I will discuss about the QE, quality engineering. So the next one is a quality engineering. So recently this term is got started, guys. QE. Along with the Q QA quality assurance and quality control, there is one more term called as a QE. What is QE? QE means quality engineering. Engineering. So this is a little advanced term, guys. Okay, this is advanced term than QC. Okay, after QC, QE will come. So normally. uh people like people are belongs to qc like testers they do normally manual testing right and they also do some automation testing testers in the nothing but we can have manual testers and automation tester who are belongs to qc but what is qe means whoever is doing automation testing normally they will write a code okay they will write the code for testing the software actually those people are comes under quality engineering okay simple guys so we have software engineer we have software engineer term right software engineer we can say se similarly quality engineer quality engineer quality engineer i say qe what is basic difference why you are calling engineer here the reason is the reason is when i say developer software engineer what they have do what they have do what they do normally they will write the code to develop the software so they will write the code by using programming language they will write the code to develop the software the main focus on development but what quality engineer will do they also write the code for testing the software so quality engineer means automation tester they also write the code for testing purpose to test the software so both are writing the code right so we can call them as a quality engineering so whoever is writing the code for development we can call them as a uh, software engineer ses and whoever is writing the code for testing the software comes under quality engineer we can call them as a quality engineer so qe is a team which contains the automation testers who are involved in the writing the code also okay that is a new term people are nowadays using in the companies and whenever you see some qe requirement don't confuse by seeing that sometimes you can see qa or qc or qe so all these terms are related to testing only and especially when i ask you qe and this particular role is related to automation testers okay that's the only difference between qa and uh, qa qc and qe okay mainly we have to understand the difference between qa and qc but the qe also mostly related to qc itself the only difference is in the qe people are also writing the code to test the software and they are also comes under qc okay so understand these differences uh, very important okay that's it so qa qc and qe now let us move on to the next topic levels of software testing levels what are the different levels we will conduct software testing so yesterday when i talk about v model what is the first level of testing we do what is the first level of testing we do unit testing after completion of the software okay let me write here so levels of testing let me write so levels of testing so what is level means step by step after one testing the next level testing or next level testing 
so these are the four levels of testing and uh, these are the techniques which we have to use for dynamic testing right unit testing integration testing system testing uat testing we can call them as a user acceptance testing user acceptance testing so let us try to understand this these are the different levels one after another first we conduct unit testing then we go to integration testing then we go to system testing then we go to user acceptance testing these are the different levels okay let us try to understand clearly very very important just understand this so unit testing so what you will do in the unit testing we are just going to test the uh, some component a small module in the application so that is normally done by the developers at the code level whatever the code some program a small program they have written for some requirement they will test that program a small piece of code will be tested that is comes under unit testing what is unit means unit means a small component is called as a unit which is unit testing integration testing means what while combining while combining multiple units or multiple modules as a single unit then we will check the data flow or communication between those modules which is called integration test and system testing means what we are testing the overall functionality of the application whether it is working according to customer requirement or not each and every requirement is mentioned in the software or working or not we are going to test that is system testing uat testing means what at the last level after completion of system testing testers along with the users will conduct user acceptance testing okay these are the different levels we cannot directly jump into system testing we cannot directly jump into integration testing so once you completed unit testing then we go for inter integration then we go for system then we go for uat uat testing so these are the different levels of testing now i will discuss in detail one by one so we need to understand them very very clearly so the first testing is unit testing this is the first level as soon as the coding is started the developers will conduct the unit testing in their environment okay we are not bother about the unit testing and all so developer will care because this is comes under white box testing technique integration and unit testing are comes under white box testing techniques remember that so let me just uh, write a few important points related to unit testing okay so let us understand what is a unit a unit is a single component or a module of a software so when i take a software which is a big software and which contains n number of features lot of functionalities lot of flows and each and every feature which we can call it as a component for example if i take a big application a gmail application in the gmail application suppose when i take a login that's the first entry right a login that is one component so after successful login composing email that is one component we can say one is that is one module and after composing the email the mail, mail comes to the send box and send box is one module and after deleting the email that comes under the deleted emails and deleting emails is one module so the entire software or application will be divided into multiple units which we can call them as a components or modules so if i conduct testing on that particular unit or module or component which is comes under unit testing okay and uh, normally developers write a simple programs for them and conducting the testing at the code level that comes under the unit testing but uh, sometimes we get the ui also in the tester point of view we will test the ui suppose i have a simple login screen and for login the developer write some code internally so developer will conduct the testing on that particular code in that context we can call as a unit testing and uh, after providing the ui ui means what screen after providing the ui to the tester we don't bother about the code we are going to test the application we are passing the valid username valid password and we are checking success login is successful or not like invalid username invalid password login is restricting or not we are going to test that in that context we can call it as a component testing we don't use a unit testing term in in case of testing or testers we we use a component testing because we are testing the ui part there but in the developer point of view whatever program they have written inside the ui if i 
conduct the testing on that particular code or program that comes under the unit testing almost same okay but the, the way of testing is different so unit is a single component or module of a software unit testing is conduct on the single program or single module because the entire software is divided into multiple pieces or multiple modules or multiple programs and unit testing is a white box testing technique why we are calling it is a white box testing technique because we have to know the internal logic of the program so what developer is written so that's the reason whoever is writing the code they are the responsible for conducting the testing so unit testing is a white box testing technique unit testing is conducted by conducted by the developers because they are the people written the code and they use certain techniques okay to conduct the unit testing they use certain techniques what are the techniques basis path testing control structure testing under this control conditional coverage and loops coverage comes under control structure testing and mutation testing these are the different techniques they use during unit testing okay like basis path testing means what for example let us try to understand very high level not much important because these are the techniques we used by the developers at the code level so let's try to understand with very high level what is basis path testing means suppose we have created some program developer is written some program like this and uh, which is having multiple lines okay and when it test this program each and every line should be covered while executing the program while providing the input to the program each and every line of the program should be executed at least once at least once so that comes under the basis path testing every path in your program should be executed at least once that comes under the basis path testing similarly control structure testing under this we have a conditional coverage loops coverage and in normally the programming we have if condition if else condition switch case condition so we will verify those conditions are working properly in all the cases like we pass naivety condition we pass positive condition so simple for example i want to find out like uh, largest of two numbers okay largest of two numbers let us say the developer is written code like this i say a is equal to 10 b is equal to 20 and i'll write one condition if a greater than b then what so i have to print a is largest a is the largest and suppose else else uh else b is larger so let us say developer has written the code like this simple code i have written here and uh, in the conditional coverage what developer will test is verify the conditions suppose if a is greater than b so a is 10 b is 20 so 10 is greater than 20 which is correct or not which is not correct so condition is false so b is the largest so the output of this program is b is largest because this condition is false suppose i'll make a value is a 20 and b value is a 10 now what happened this condition becomes true because a value is a 20 20 greater than 10 so the condition is true so then it prints a is the largest so if the condition is true it print a is largest if the condition is false b is largest only one output you will get either a is largest or b is largest depends on the condition so in the conditional coverage what developer will do is the developer will verify the condition in positive input and negative input so previously the condition become false now the condition becomes true in both the cases we will verify that so that comes under the conditional coverage so developer normally write a huge number of programs and n number of conditions will be it will be there in the program in all the conditions will be verified by providing the different sets of data okay so that is comes under conditional coverage and the next one we have is loops coverage so sometimes in the programming if you want to repeat some statements we have to keep in the looping like loop block and that statement will be repeated multiple times okay so for example let me write a simple example don't worry if you are not understood this code okay it's a very basic code i have written to just demonstrate what is conditional coverage now i'll tell you loops coverage what is loops coverage let us say developer has written some code or oh, suppose my program is let us say i want to print uh, one to five five numbers i want to print one to five numbers through program 
and developer has written some code like this so how developer is written developer is taken a small number let's say initial number is 1 starting from 1 and what is the maximum number maximum number is maximum number is 5 and between 1 to 5 i want to print all the numbers so normally we can write there is a print 1 okay and you can say print 2 print 3 we can just write multiple statements like this let's say print 2 so let's say multiple statement i can add 1 2 3 and 4 and 5 so when i say if i want to print 1 to 5 numbers i can write number of print statements but instead of writing this suppose i want to print 100 numbers then we have to write 100 print statements so to avoid that the what developer will do is they will write only one statement and repeat five times same statement will repeat five times instead of writing multiple times so then what you will do is they will put this statement in the loop means is a block which will repeat multiple time based on certain condition okay just observe this don't worry if you are not understood no issues at all so here i'm writing the one loop statement so here i'm writing something else while i less than or equal to max okay and then inside the block i'll put this print statement every time i'm printing the i value not one see this and after printing the i value i'm incrementing the i value i equal to i plus 1 just observe this logic don't worry if you are not understood no issues just understand very high level my requirement here is i just want to print 1 to 5 numbers so initial number is 1 the maximum number is 5 okay so here what exactly i am doing is i put some condition based on the condition if the condition is true these two statements will execute if the condition is false these two statement will not be executed it will ignore it so if i say 1 maximum is 5 so 1 less than or equal to 5 condition is true then what happens here it will print i means 1 it will print the output then what happens as soon as i printed i value 1 i value is incremented by 1 so i equal to i plus 1 means what i value is already 1 1 plus 1 2 now 2 is assigned to the i now currently i value is a 2 now again it will go up and again check the condition now 2 is a current value of i is 2 2 less than or equal to 5 again condition is true now it will come here then it will print 2 similarly every time it will print i value as soon as it printed i value again it will increment and again check the condition so like this the same block of statements will execute multiple times so as soon as i value becomes 6 then condition become false then it will stop printing the numbers so this is basically called as a loop in programming we can call it as a loop loop is nothing but a block of statements which we can repeat multiple times based on certain condition okay and as soon as this condition is false the statements are stopped executing okay now in the loops coverage what you will test is when i execute this program whether it is starting from the beginning or not and it is repeating exactly uh, till the maximum number or not and whether it is printing all the numbers between this range or not okay we are going to verify and suppose when i say 6 here so 6 numbers should print when i say 10 here it should print 10 numbers okay so like this we will verify the loops that comes on the loops coverage okay this is purely related to programming okay so that's the reason which is comes under unit testing which is a white box testing technique so to conduct this type of testing we have to know the programming and the last one is a mutation testing so mutation is nothing but a repetition suppose uh, some programs if you want to test we have to provide different type of inputs okay suppose a uh, developer is written some program like this like checking the user and password let's say if user equal to let's say scott and uh, password password is equal to let's say 1 2 3 then i say hello login okay and else if the user is not scott and not password 1 2 3 then not hello login so let us say simple code is written by the developer like this now in the mutation testing what you will do is we will test this code by passing different type of inputs for example when i provide the username is scott and password is 123 then this condition will be true login will be allowed and else part will be ignored 
and uh, suppose when i pass valid user it's got an invalid password instead of 1 2 3 and i pass something else like 2 3 5 then else part will execute not allowed the logic that is one combination and another combination valid username and valid password valid username and valid uh, invalid password like invalid username and valid password okay so we can just say different combinations and by providing different type of inputs we are going to test this program whether it is working properly or not that is comes under the mutation testing mutation is nothing but a repetition testing the code with multiple sets of data okay so these are all unit testing techniques we can say unit testing techniques and the developers will use these techniques to conduct unit testing they also use some automation tools unit testing also can be done through automation they use unit unit uh, j unit testing e so these are all unit testing tools are available okay developers will take care of this we no need to worry about this we no need to worry about this okay just understand what is unit testing and who will conduct unit testing and what testing can be done in the unit testing so that is enough okay so we are mainly involved in the system testing we have to discuss more on the system testing phase so here this is a area actually we are going to involve more that is our area and rest of the things we no need to bother about just we need to understand the definition and process okay so that is unit testing guys now let us move on to the next level of testing so please focus guys what i am saying very very important topics i am discussing so the next level of testing is integration testing and do we miss any points here unit testing is a white box testing unit testing is conducted by the developers and these are the different techniques fine so now let us move on to the next level of testing which is integration testing guys integration testing okay so which very very important integration testing all right so very important the next one is integration testing so what is integration test you will get lot of interview questions also so please listen carefully so what is integration testing okay. so let me write a few points here so integration testing perform between two or more modules so what is module we have already discussed what is module module is nothing but a small functionality or small feature from the software which is called as a module so if i take a gmail application login is one module composing email is one module and deleting emails is one module outbox is one module sent emails is one module so different modules will be there in your application similarly if i take a banking application login is a mo one module and sending money or transfer money is one module check balance is one module generating the report is one module so every software every application is having different modules okay so integration testing will be conduct or perform between two or more modules so if you want to perform integration testing at least two modules will be integrated so after completion of unit testing we do integration testing so during integration testing we'll conduct the testing between two or more modules and uh, integration testing focuses on checking the data communication between multiple modules there is one module which will take some input and which will produce some output and that output is become the input for the next module so it will be like this guys in uh, integration testing let us say i have one module here let us say a and this module if you want to test we have to pass some input to this and after passing some input to this module it will give you some outcome or output that becomes a input for the next module and this is also giving some output so we are going to test the communication between these two modules after combining these two that is called integration testing integration testing means we are checking the data flow between the two or multiple modules which is comes under integration testing and the next point integration testing is a white box testing techniques so normally integration testing can be conducted in two different things guys in the developer point of view if i talk they will test the code so they will write the code for 
uh, some write some program for module A, they will write another program for module B, and they will integrate these two programs and they will test the code how the integration is happening. This is comes under integration. In that context, you can say developers will perform the integration testing at the code level, at the code level. Okay. Suppose sometimes the testers also will perform integration testing. But how come it is possible? Because here, let us say, uh, I'll give you a simple example, then you can understand. Let us say something called, so we have something called uh, Gmail application. Let us take an example, then understand a Gmail application. Okay. So in the Gmail application, what are the different modules we have? We have something called login. Okay, so login is a one module and after successful login where we can see all our emails in the mailbox so there is something called mailbox this is another module suppose okay so suppose i deleted some emails from my mailbox where it goes it goes to deleted email section so there is another module called deleted emails so deleted email so these are three different models in my application okay so in integration testing developer point of view if i talk developer point of view they will write some code for login they will write some code for mailbox functionality they will write some code for deleting emails this is just a coding part okay and then integrate these three modules and what developer will do First, they execute the first module and after successful execution, it went to mailbox and after deleting the after, after deleting action, the mail comes to the deleted email section. So the integration between the programs will be tested. That is integration testing done by the developers. Okay, that is integration testing done by the developer. This is a purely white box testing. Now come to the testers. For the same login, instead of providing the code, they will provide us a UI part. We will have a UI. Like here, username field will be there, password field. Then we have to enter the data. Then we will get another page, Gmail page. Here we will see mailbox. Here we will see send items, right? So on the UI side, we also conduct the integration testing. How we can do? First, we will verify the login by passing valid username and valid password, then successfully log into application. Then we will check the email box. There we will have any emails or not, we will verify. After deleting the email, that email comes to the send box or not, we will verify. So because these are different module, but the communication will be there between these two modules. How data is communicating between these modules, we are going to test at the application level. This is also comes under integration testing. And in the testing point of view or tester point of view, we also conduct integration testing at the application level and developer point of view, developer also conduct integration tester at the coding level. That is a basic difference. Okay. Understood guys, what I'm explaining here. So the same kind of testing, the developers will conduct at the code level, whatever the code they have written, that is one integration testing at the tester point of view, we don't have this code. Okay, we don't test this code. They will create a UI for that. And that UI user interface will be provided to the tester. And then in the testing point of view, we are verifying the application functionality. So login is module, like mailbox or inbox is one module, deleted emails is one module. So we are verifying these functionality in different modules are working fine or not after integration. So this is a integration testing done by the testers at the UI level. And if I test the programs that comes under the integration testing done by the testers, oh, sorry, developers. Okay. So guys understood this very, very important. So integration testing means testing the data flow between multiple modules, testing the data flow between multiple modules, which is called as integration testing. If I do integration testing at the code level, by the developers and sometimes we can do integration testing at the ui level by the testers okay so that is the concept of integration testing now in integration testing there are 
two types of integration testings we have. Okay, understand say types of integration testing. There are two types of integration testing we have. So one is incremental integration, non-incremental integration. Listen these concepts, guys. Very very clear. Incremental integration testing, non-incremental integration testing. This is also incremental integration testing, non-incremental integration testing. So first, let us try to understand first one incre incremental integration testing because this is most important. Most of the times we don't use non-incremental. Most of the times we use incremental integration testing. So let us try to understand what is incremental incre integration testing. So this is also integration testing. So what is incremental integration testing? Incremental integration testing means incrementally adding the modules and testing the data flow between the modules. Incrementally adding the modules and testing the data flow between the modules. What does that mean? Incrementally adding the modules and testing the data flow between the modules. Simple. Incremental integration. So what you will do is first we will have one module. Let us say A. Then we will integrate another module with the A and then we will check the communication between these two modules. Again, we will add one more module and then check the communication between the modules. So we keep on adding a new modules with the existing modules, then test the data flow or communication between the modules, which is called as incremental integration testing. So we keep on in adding the new modules with the existing modules. That is called incremental integration model. We are, don't integrate all the modules at once. We are integrating the modules one after another, which is called as incremental integration testing. The first one. Incrementally adding the modules and testing the data flow between the modules. Incrementally adding the modules and testing the data flow between the modules, which is called as incremental integration testing. There are two kinds of incremental integration. Again, there are two approaches we have. So the first approach is top down approach and bottom up approach. I'm also talking still incremental integration testing. Okay. In the incremental integration testing, we have a two approaches, top down approach and bottom up approach. Let us see what is top down and bottom up in the both approaches. We will incrementally add multiple modules one after another and test the data flow between the modules. So let us see what is top down approach. What is bottom approach? Okay. So first let us see top down approach. So what is top down top down? We can say top down incremental integration testing. So this is a terminology. So top down approach in incremental integration testing here. Observe this carefully here, incrementally adding the modules and testing the data flow between the modules, same thing. And ensure the module is added is child of the previous model. This is important point. Ensure the module added is a child of the previous model. Ensure the module which is added as a child of the previous model. For example, let us say I have a module called A. Okay, this is my actual model. So when I integrate this model with another module, the another module should be the child of the existing module. So this should be child module and this should be the parent module. Okay, so whatever module we are incrementally adding, that should be a child module. And uh, how we can understand this? What is parent module? What is child module? So again, let us take the Gmail example. So in the Gmail example, uh, we have it two modules. Let's say composing email is one module. After login is successful, we will compose the email. After composing and sending the email, the same email comes to send items. So, right? If you want to check what are the emails you have sent, we can verify in the sent items list, right? So first to which one we will do composing activity. So once the compose is done, that comes to the send items. Until unless we compose an email, that email cannot come to the sent items. So here, 
before sent items first we have to do the compose so this is a parent module this is the child module okay compose is a parent module sent item is a child module so in, in incremental integration testing in the top down approach in the top down approach we will check the data communication between these two modules and make sure the module whichever we have added should be the child of the existing module and tomorrow if you add another module deleted items here we can add deleted items this is another child module for the this particular module so whatever module we have added that should be the child module of the existing module that is incremental integration testing top down approach okay top down approach okay first a top module then another module then another module child modules or we can say sub modules okay that is a top down approach incremental integration testing so incrementally adding the modules and testing the data flow between the modules ensure the module added is a child of the previous module okay this is a top down approach so this is an example if i remember this example it is very easy to remember okay first we will compose the mail then only we can get the send items so this is a parent and this is a child so later if you want to add multiple modules those modules should be the child modules of the existing module so this is called incremental integration testing top down approach now come to the next one bottom up approach okay there is one more approach called bottom up approach this is also incremental integration the first one but here i am talking about bottom up approach what is bottom up approach in the bottom up approach this is also same incrementally adding the modules and testing the data flow between the modules same thing but here ensure the module which is added is a parent of the previous model parent of the previous model remember in the top down approach whatever the module we have added that should be the child of the previous model but this time what i'm saying to ensure the module which is added is a parent of the previous model parent of the previous model what does it mean parent of the previous uh, previous parent of the previous model so for example in the top down approach what we have done we have a parent module and then we have added the child child module so this is top down approach in the bottom up approach suppose i have one module a and uh, i can add another module on top of this like this now whatever module we are integrating that should be the parent module of the previous module so for a b is a parent module and then another module okay this is a bottom up approach so first we integrate one parent module will be there and uh, whatever the new modules we are adding or integrating that should be the parent module okay now where we have to start the testing now first we'll start testing here then we go here then we go here okay so this is a example so same example you can take same compose email and send items when i say compose email after composing email the email comes to the sent items so let us take this same example in the bot in the top down approach first we compose the email and then we verify the sent items because after composing email then only the mail comes into sent items this is top down approach same thing if you want to do bottom up approach first we go to send emails and verify the email is present or not if the email is present that will be already composed that is already composed so first we will start testing here we will get this module and then integrate the parent module and combinedly we will test it we cannot test independent modules guys okay we have to combine and test it because until unless we compose we cannot test the sent items first we integrate the parent module and come do the testing in bottom up in bottom in top down approach we will integrate the child module and then test it the ultimate goal is same integration testing but the approach of integration is different top down approach and bottom up approach okay top down approach and bottom up approach so this is 
So in the top down incremental integration, incrementally adding the modules and testing the rate of flow between the modules, ensure the module added is a child of the previous module. Same thing we do in incremental integration of bottom up approach. Here also we incrementally adding the modules and testing the data flow between the modules. Ensure the module is added is a parent of the previous module. Previous parent of the pre previous module is this is a previous module. If I add another module, this becomes a parent of the previous module. This is comes under bottom up approach. And there will be another approach interviews people may ask that is called sandwich approach. Okay sandwich or hybrid approach this is just a combination of top down and bottom up simple okay so combination we use both the combinations combination of top down and bottom approach is called as a sandwich approach so these three approaches comes under integration uh, incremental integration testing incremental integration testing okay we are adding the modules incrementally one after another and test the data flow between the modules the way of adding the modules is different we can add a new modules in top down approach or we can follow bottom up approach okay so this is all about the first type of integration testing the next type is non incremental integration it is very simple straight forward in non incremental testing we integrate all module at once we integrate all the module in one shot. We don't have any integrating multiple modules one after another. Suppose I have a 10 modules in my application. We have to wait to complete all 10 modules and combine everything and start testing. So simply that is non-incremental integration testing. So adding all the modules in one single shot and test the data flow between the module, which is called non-incremental. But most of the times, we don't prefer this option because it has a three drawbacks. What are the drawbacks? The first drawback is we might miss data flow between some modules. Suppose if you do incremental integration, one, two, three, four, there are less number of chances to miss the particular module. But here we are integrating all the modules as a single unit. So while testing, we may miss some module in between. There are some chances are there. So that is one problem. And if you find any defect, right, it is very difficult to find out that defect is belongs to in which module because we already integrated all the modules at once. So it is very, very difficult to find out the defect which is belongs to in which module. It is very difficult to understand the root cause of the defect. So because of these two, two drawbacks, we don't prefer to do non-incremental integration testing guys okay we always do incremental integration testing okay so increment integration testing means what after combining multiple modules we are verifying the data flow between the modules comes under integration testing and again there are two kinds of integration testing one is incremental integration testing non-incremental integration testing and again, integ incremental integration can be done in two different approaches, top down and bottom up approach. And, uh, and also sandwich approach. Sandwich approach is also comes under this one, the combination of two approaches. And non-incremental integration testing, we are not going to increment any modules. We are combining all the modules at once and do the testing. So that is non-incremental integration testing. So the drawbacks are two. There are two drawbacks in the non-incremental testing. That's the reason we don't prefer to perform non-incremental integration testing. So this is one level of testing. So, so far, how many levels we discussed? Unit testing we discussed. Integration testing is also we discussed. Now, let us talk about system testing. So this is the actual testing where we have to involve as a tester. So system testing itself will take two to three sessions guys okay that much is bigger we are going to discuss different type of testings which we are going to conduct as part of system testing but now i'll just give you very high level overview what is system testing what we are going to do in the system testing in the coming sessions i will discuss in detail what exactly system testing means and what are the different type of testings we will conduct so because this is the actual area testers will be involved okay so what is system testing? Very, very important. 
So testing overall functionality of the application with respect to the customer or client requirements. So here we are mainly focusing on the functionality of the application. What is the functionality of the application? Suppose customer says some requirement like in my application, in my software, so and so should be there and they will give some requirement. And uh, as a test, what you will do is the requirement is present in software or not. The requirement is working properly or not. The functionality is working properly or not. The functionality is nothing but some feature of your application. So simple example, guys, let us take a WhatsApp. In the WhatsApp, what are the features or functionalities we have? We can add the contact. We can send the message. We can send the videos, images, right? We can share the location map. So these are all different features of WhatsApp, okay? So similarly, every software, every application is also having different number of features. So in the system testing, we are going to test those features. We are not going to touch the code. We are going to test the functional features, functionality of the application with respect to the customer requirement. Okay, whether it is working to according to customer requirement or not. That's the main intention of conducting system testing. System is what? Everything. And it is a black box testing technique because we are not going to touch the code. We are getting the UI application from the developers. We'll install it and we'll completely test it. And this testing is conducted by the testing team and testers are responsible for this testing because here the main thing is we have to know the requirement. We have to thoroughly understand the customer requirement, understand the flow of application, understand the UI. That's more important. We no need to understand any code what is, uh, what is created by the developers, okay? So the requirement understanding is very, very important here. So after completion of component or integration testing, we start test system testing. This is a third level of testing guys. First unit testing should be conducted. Then integration testing will be done. After that, we will start system testing. Until unless those testings are completed, we cannot get the build or application from the developer. Then we will start the system testing, third level of testing. So before conducting system testing, we should know the customer requirement. As I said before, we have to be understand system requirement from the customer thoroughly. So we will have different documents provided by the customers and designers and developers. We will, re we will read those documents and understand the requirement clearly. And then only we can conduct the testing. And system testing is mainly focusing on four areas case, okay? User interface testing, functional testing, non-functional testing, usability testing. So these are the four main categories of system testing we are going to conduct. Again, in each and every category, there are different type of testing we will conduct, okay? In the coming sessions, I will explain in detail what exactly these testings are and what are other type of testings we can conduct in this category because before conducting the testing, we have to know what kind of testings we have to do. We have to conduct. That's the most important, right? So that's the reason we are understanding this theoretically first. If you know the what, then the next level is how. If you know what type of testing should be conducted, then the next level, we will know how to conduct those testings. Okay. So that is the reason here we are understanding what are the different testings will be there and where exactly tester will involve, what kind of testings the tester can do. And once we understand this, in the next level, we will see how we can do those testings practically. So that we are going to focus. So system testing focuses mainly on four aspects. User interface testing means what? UI of the application. So for example, if I give the amazon.com, that is a UI. So what you will test on the UI part? So you are going to test all the images properly aligned or not, logo is displayed or not or like elements, like application elements, like text boxes, check boxes, drop downs are properly displayed or not. Look and feel of your application, the colors and font. So these things we are going to mainly focus. That is user interface testing, okay? And each and every flow is properly working or not. And the navigating between the pages. So these things are comes under user interface testing. The next level of, next is a functional testing. This is also comes under system testing. And in the functional testing, we are going to test the functionality of the application. 
what is the functionality means the navigation flow actual functionality suppose when i say banking application so we test the login login is a one functionality and after successful login we will test the balance check balance functionality and money transfer functionality adding pay is a functionality generating report is a functionality request checkbook is one functionality so once application is there there are lot of main functionalities are there so we are going to test those functionalities are properly working or not those features are properly working or not that comes on the functional testing okay so we have input domain testing error handling testing database testing different type of testing will be there under functional testing so we are going to discuss them in the coming sessions the next one is a non functional testing so non functional in the sense like security testing performance testing installation testing compatibility testing so these are all comes under non functional testing so once the functionality is a stable then we'll start doing non functional testing so if the functionality is working perfectly fine then we will test the performance performance testing comes under non functional so what is performance testing means the speed of the application suppose if your application is accessed by n number of people through internet you are checking the speed of your application how well your application is responding to the users that is the speed of application but before testing that we have to test the functionality stable or not that is very very important and then non functional testing will start we'll test the performance testing in this again load testing trust testing volume testing compatibility testing security testing so there are different type of testings will be there which are comes under non functional testing and even in the real time there will be a separate environment will be there to conduct non functional testing and this is also not done by the normal functional testers there are separate dedicated team will be there to conduct non functional testing because they, that needs a different setup environment okay normal environment will not be sufficient to conduct non functional experts will be there security testing performance testing so these testings are very very huge testings and a lot of expertise is required to conduct those testings a special category of people will be there in the team and they will take care of those testings and finally we have usability testing usability testing in the sense a uh, user help suppose suppose if you bought some product is mobile phone or any bike or car whatever along with those product you will also get some document user manuals we can say what user manual contains how to use a product right so that user manual is very very important and required for the users even along with the software we are also going to provide the user manuals to the user or customer so we have to verify those user manuals so that user manual having proper content or not how to install the product how to perform the functionality each and every step whatever we do in the application will be documented that is basically called as a user context and sometimes in our applications also you will see some help menu at the corner even if you open the notepad or whatever you can see some help menu there you can get the help of that particular product so those things we are going to focus while doing usability testing so user friendly how friendly your application is for your customer so that is usability testing okay so these are all comes under system testing the overall functionality not only functionality non functional aspects also we are going to test as part of system testing okay so here actual testers are involved very very important so next coming 3 to 4 sessions we are mainly focusing on only system testing because this is the exact area where we have to more focus on and after system testing the last level of testing is user acceptance testing uat testing this is the last level after completion of system testing user acceptance testing will be conducted so user acceptance testing normally conducted by the uh, customers or users who are using the software and uh, everything is working fine then they will accept the software okay whatever the requirement they have given they will finally verify those requirements are satisfying with this product or not so the main testing will be done by the users or customers or testers or developers can be do some help on them so they can assist them so testers also sometimes will be involved 
in the user acceptance testing along with the user. So here we have again, again, multiple things like alpha testing, beta testing will be there. So after completion of system testing, UAT team conducts acceptance testing in different levels, like alpha testing and beta testing, something like this. Alpha testing in the sense, the users or customers will do the testing and development environment. Development or testing environment or means what? They will come back to the company, wherever the software is developed, they will come back to the company and do some testing. That is alpha testing. After that, they will get the software and install that in their environment install that in their environment, in the customer environment, and then do some basic testing. That comes under the beta testing. After completion of these two testings, our product or software will go to production. And then actual customers will start using the software. Okay, so this is user acceptance testing, the last level of testing. So we have discussed four levels of testing guys. One is unit level, unit testing, integration testing, system testing, user acceptance testing. So in the coming sessions, we will talk more about system testing because this is the actual area we have to involve and n number of testings we are going to conduct. So what are those testings that we have to learn first? After learning, then we will see practical implementation, how we can conduct those testings. Before that, we have to know what are those testings and then we will know how we can conduct the testing, okay? So that is a concept of levels of software testing, guys, okay? So in the next session, tomorrow, we are going to discuss rest of the system testing, GUI testing in detail. So these are all comes under again, system testing, okay? So that's all for today's session, guys. I'm just stopping here. Now, if you have anything, you can discuss.